How's it going, everyone? Venomous Stare here, back with another StarCraft 2 replay, analyzation, slash commentary. And if you're anything like me, you are so damn tired of playing this map, Orbital Shipyard. But today we have a PVT, Protoss versus Terran. And we're going to be talking about what to do from the Protoss' point of view if you want to cheese. Now, I kicked it up to times four at the beginning because nothing went on except for the fact that I went Nexus first and then made a gateway, a gas, and my cyber core. The Terran also expanded and is now going reactor barracks. So, whenever you cheese against Terran, one of the things that you always have to worry about is this initial Reaper. A good Terran player will never lose this. Now, sometimes it can happen. In this game, I did go Nexus first, so this Reaper is going to do more damage than usual. But one thing you need to remember whenever you cheese, as the Reaper does get very low, but it gets a kill, is this guy should keep this Reaper. And even if he doesn't, the Terran has scan. So you should always try to proxy whenever you cheese with Protoss. Not always, but if you're trying to hide tech and you're doing a cheese, hiding it in the corner of a two-player map, otherwise known as proxying, is a very good idea because if we go to our opponent's vision, look what he's seen. And if he scans or rescouts, he's probably just going to look over here. So the benefit of proxying is that if we hide our buildings out here, our opponent will be significantly less likely to see them. Now I know this is a very basic concept to some of you who have already played the game a lot, but I like to touch on general topics whenever I do these commentaries because there are a lot of new players. So Nutatsu has this bunker on the low ground. Since he already walled in on the high ground, this bunker is a nice little start to being able to add on his third base and already have defense set up. Nutatsu is also building a Cyclone, which lock on and do severe damage to Protoss units. And we see I've built the Twilight Council. This either means I'm going DT or some kind of uh, upgrade. Usually, whenever you proxy, it's almost always DT. So the Dark Shrine. This building obviously allows me to get Dark Templar and my opponent doesn't know. And Dark Templar are some of the strongest units whenever you make them and your opponent is not expecting them. Notice I've been pumping double probes the entire game, saturated in my main and now I'm rallying out to my natural. That's my most, that's the most effective way to do it as well as the easiest in my opinion. I've made three gateways because Dark Templars are expensive and I'm also having to constantly make workers. Notice I have quite a bit of money here. I'm waiting for this Dark Shrine to finish, but I really should do something with this money. And here's a third base and a forge. Two forge. So, big macro play. The third base, very strong economically, obviously. And the double forge off of only three gateways and no robo unit. So this would be considered greedy. Now, why am I doing this, you might be asking. I'm doing this because I'm making Dark Templar and since I proxied the Dark Shrine I'm just gonna venture to guess that my opponent is going to have his dick in his hand and is not going to be prepared for these Dark Templar I think they're gonna hit him right in the mouth so my opponent sees my third base that's not good but he scouted and we couldn't have really stopped it but if we look at his vision He's just kind of macroing along, adding his extra barracks. And everyone knows this feeling when shit hits the fan. Oh no. Now while our opponent's dealing with this, what do we do? We start to get upgrades. No, he's having to pull, look at that. He doesn't have energy for scan either because he's been muling properly. There he has one scan, but one DT remains and is holding off this base. What does that mean? My third has already completed and I'm making probes already. Notice how this guy's third normally would have already been landed and we would be matched. Because of this Dark Templar harass, my third is now significantly far ahead. Already has six workers and is fully functioning. Fully functioning in the sense that it's made and has probe support. Okay, so it wasn't fully functioning, but it was 
functioning better than his, which hasn't even landed. So look at this. Look at all the damage our DTs did because they weren't scouted. We forced a turret in each mineral line. We killed 20 workers. I'm going to turn that on too. And we stopped this base from mining. Excellent work. This is a very good pylon spot because even if they take this fourth base, they'll just rally, they'll just rally through here and they probably won't even see this probe. If you want to be sneaky, you can tuck it further over here. If you want to be more aggressive, you can tuck it over here and warp shit on the low ground. It's a nice little probe spot. Adepts are very strong versus Terran now because they do damage versus light units. If you make them, one thing you need to consider doing is to get this upgrade, Resonating Glaives. Protoss doesn't really have to go for er, as early of a robo anymore, but I think you still should get a robo every single game uh, relatively early on just for observers because observers are essential when dealing with Terran drops. Notice how Natatsu had to make this turret here preemptively. This isn't that big of a deal, but it is a pain in the ass for Terran to have to constantly worry about pushing forward with turrets. And DTs, look at this, another turret. That's a worker that's not mining and 75 minerals. Nitatsu also lacking on upgrades. He did get quite a bit of fast tech. Notice this is being chrono boosted, this adept upgrade. Most of the time, whenever you upgrade things from the Twilight Council, you should always prioritize using your chrono boost there. And this is one thing that's worth noting whenever you do severe damage with Dark Templar is oftentimes you can rattle your opponent so badly will they'll be be behind for minutes and oftentimes they can recover economically but one thing they can't do is harass because they're just so preoccupied with trying to get all their ducks in a row after your harass. This is another great thing you should do versus Terran. Just be an obnoxious shithead with warp prisms we go to income, look at this. I have a significant worker lead. Warping in more DTs. Extremely annoying harassment units. Not very good micro there, but... Double drop from the Tatsu. He's going to start to fight back. I misclicked here. If you see, I meant to target them onto add-ons. Although I did get one barracks, so I guess that wasn't completely awful. Remember, whenever you do harass like that, you usually want to split up your units. That was some pretty bad micro, actually. But see, even though I fucked up the micro, I kept the warp prism, and I pr made him f build two tur turrets. Ugh, God. Here's Natatsu's drop. Notice that I immediately pull the probes. That's what you want to do. You don't want to lose your probes to drops. So I don't have blink. There's really no way I can defend this because I'm sim cityed off ineffectively. And Natatsu, he's killed about seven workers with that drop and he gets away with some of it. And here I have High Templar. Oh my god, that makes me so sad. I really didn't think he would fly that over that. Well, that was a bad mistake. But this is what I was doing, this is why I made the mistake. I was resetting up my probes. And Terran players are creatures of habit, they like to drop a lot in the same spot. So whenever you get dropped, you want to make defense. <laughs> you want to make defense in that exact same spot. So here's Natatsu with this exact same drop. He's trying to get back into the game. It's going to fly into a cannon, which isn't really that big of a deal when you have a dozen or eight stem marines, but that cannon is really just to delay. It's not to stop the drop. That one cannon will really only... This is bad. These workers should have been pulled, but I was defending this drop over here. But that cannon's really just to delay and kind of prepare... And remember, warping in DTs to defend drops is good because Terrans don't want to spend drop or don't want to spend scans to kill DTs. Excuse me, and here's Natatsu. I'm going to try to run it again and hopefully I don't fuck up this time. 
Thankfully, I had my head out of my ass at that juncture. So look at this. He's been contained on three bases. There's a DT here. There's a DT here. There's a warp prism there to keep him in his base. And I'm moving across the map. So Natatsu, even though he's been harassing me well, I've been able to establish these bases through splitting up my army a bit. And since I've been double upgrading with Chrono, although this is bad, you should never let your upgrades slip like this, I still have a significant advantage on him though. 1-1 one, one to 3-2, I could do almost anything I want micro-wise and still win. And remember, I did get the Adept upgrade. Double preemptive time warp going down to make him think like I'm going to run in. Nope, it was a fake. Four zealots. So now he has to make a mistake or make a decision how much of my army will I bring. Most players will just pre panic and bring their whole army. I really wasn't expecting to kill this, but now I can run in and kill what the rest of he has. Uh, kill the rest of what he has. Should always focus fire liberators when you can because they do such severe damage. But look at this, fourth, fifth, both built. They need to be probed, but significantly more than what he has. Remember, if you can take if you can take bases, even if you don't have the multitasking to properly saturate them or the probes to properly saturate them, taking bases and having them there is still an advantage because after you do an attack like this and gain a lead, as we see, I get greedy and try to warp in and run in zealots there. This is why you need to kill the liberators because they prevent you from doing obnoxious shit like that. But see, look at this. What do I do? I take another base. Look how much money I have. This is fine. I have lots of warp gates. I warp in right there. 12 DT's money goes down significantly. Look at this. Whenever you constantly do things to your opponent and then macro behind it, you'll get leads. This guy has a fourth, but I have also have a fourth, and I also have a fifth, and I'm making a sixth, and he knows that. He knows I have this fifth, and Natatsu is scared. He knows something needs to be done. He's seen, he's seen my upgrades, too. So I desperately need to make an army, a good army. As you can see, I'm still, I'm still trying to take macro advantages. I'm not really properly macroing. I'm trying to take, like, base advantages and set up infrastructure so he can't drop me to death. And he's also trying to set up infrastructure. Notice that I have a DT here and I had one here so I know that he didn't have a fourth. That allowed me to take the risk of setting up the sixth base because I knew that he would try to fly his fourth out and take it. Luckily he didn't attack while he did that. He assumed that I had an army so these rocks should have been down a long time ago, that's a mistake. And this Miss Micro is a mistake, so now I'm in a bad position because he can set up liberation zones. But his economy is so fucked from all the harass I've done. So you see Archons are very strong, especially when you make no Marauders. Ooh, blink forward. This is why you should always go High Templar in the late game. Because even if you're shit at micro, you can just dump storms. And if it makes your opponent not go pure marine. Oftentimes, look at this huge warp in cross map. Oftentimes versus Protoss, it's very hard to deal with players who are good at microing marines. <laughs> and will just constantly drop you. But if you go storm, I mean even marine king can't micro through a certain amount of storm. And that's why I like storm. Colossus aren't as good as they used to be. And he hates Protoss. I would too. That game was probably really annoying to play. So if you enjoyed it, if you learned anything, rate, comment, subscribe, do that thing. Peace out.